You are now listening to the Peach Pundit Podcast, where we are expressing our own personal opinions. These views may not reflect the opinions of those whom we may be professionally affiliated. Hey, folks. Welcome to another episode of the Peach Pundit Podcast. I am Jason Pye, joined by Buzz Brockway and Scott Turner. Gentlemen. Hello. Howdy. Yo. It, it is good to see your beautiful faces. Uh, you're you're welcome, this, America. On this Friday afternoon. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, how you guys been? How are things? Good. I am tired. Uh, between Alec last week and NCSL this week and traveling to Denver for NCSL and the altitude and the – the twelve-hour-long days there, it was. Um, I'm dragging rear end. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, uh, I've seen you in worse shape, Scott. But uh... <laughs> yeah, we call those days at end of life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we've got. Uh, you know, it is August. Uh, things typically slow down in August. Uh, things really start to pick back up again uh, around about after Labor Day. But we got stuff to talk about, and starting uh, kicking off our our Peach Pundit podcast this week, a judge has issued a ruling, um, basically saying that the PSC races, Public Service Commission races, uh, the elections for those uh, cannot move forward in November, uh, and that he the judge could extend the election to uh, for these two seats uh, into next year. This is particularly interesting. Um, you know, PSC, most people, most I gather most Georgians don't know what the hell the Public Service Commission is, uh, but they, they regulate insurance rate, or insurance rates, energy rates. Mm-hmm. Uh, they regulate, uh, I believe, limousines, if I, if I recall correctly. I think that's like a random thing they regulate, yep. uh, as well as a, a few other things. Uh, but, uh, Scott, you you flagged this for us, and or I guess, yeah, you flagged this for us, and, and I'm, I'm I've never seen anything like this before, so this is pretty. This is pretty interesting. Well, it's interesting from the scope. It's pushing the election back into an unknown day and time. So, uh, you know, constitutionally, these these the the authority to set the time and manner of the election for PSC rests in the Constitution and has been given to the General Assembly mm-hmm. to set. One hundred and forty years ago, they decided that they would do it this way. And we have all kinds of statewide elections, even if they're not districted, you know, that require somebody to live in a specific district. But U.S. Senate, for example, uh, gubernatorial races, lieutenant governor's races, secretary of state's races, and they all are elected statewide. The really interesting aspect of this for me is that the effort affects the only African-American on the PSC currently, which is Fitz Johnson. Mm -hmm. He's running for re-election. He's an African American from Cobb County, and or is he in Fulton? Cobb. Maybe, I think he's in Cobb. So at any rate, he, yeah. At any rate, he is currently serving on PSC, and the thrust of the of the judge's decision, if you read it, is that not enough black people are elected to PSC. Well, here he is, and you're trying to unseat him <laughs> with this ruling. Which is interesting, uh, that alone. But I mean, some of the complainants. So I've I've actually had some private conversations with people who are involved in the lawsuit, mm-hmm. and what I've been told is that there are racial disparities when it comes to disconnects for power and service, gas mm-hmm. uh, between African American community and other demographics groups. The for example, 60 plus percent of power disconnects for Georgia Power are African American. That's obviously disproportionate. The question I have, and I'd like to get to the answer to this because I think there's a solution, is why, mm-hmm. right? And is it a education problem where they just simply don't understand that they have the ability to put be put on a payment plan, which would prevent them from being disconnected, mm-hmm. or are there other socio socio economic issues at play here? But for a judge to take the unprecedented stance of well, you know, you, you, you people who are on the PSC, let's just keep you there for an undetermined amount of time past the expiration of your term Buzz, what so you that got? I can legislate from the bench and figure out how to do this is really extraordinary. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, that, I mean, yeah, I, I, I think, 
I know some of the Twitter, Scott and I were talking earlier before we came on, some of the Twitter legal experts self-appointed are uh, you know, chalking this up to yet another racist system set up by Brian Kemp and the Republicans. Yeah, you know, forgetting, of course, that <laughs> this 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 uh, structure of PSC was set up a long, long time ago, and in the grand scope of Georgia history, the Democratic Party controlled uh, <laughs> controlled Georgia for a lot longer than Republicans did, much less Brian Kemp. But anyway, set, setting them aside, I think yeah, you know, what Scott said there, the the issues of you know uh, disparate impact uh, do need to be considered. Are important. Are important ones. Um, you know, the, I mean, the simple fix is probably for the legislature to – they already have PSC districts. Uh, just let people run in their districts and be elected from their districts as opposed to being, uh, you know, at-large seats like they all are. Uh, and then you can draw then – you, then you can debate, you know, what's how to draw fair districts for this. Um, but I, I think, you know, the, the larger question that Scott talked about there that the judge is considering is um, – that disparate impact on on people, and we see that a lot in society. There there are disparate impacts um, in all sorts of ways, and and I'm I'm a person who who's um, who's open to the idea and actually thinks that there are some there is some structural racism in the United States that we need to examine. Uh, so the question is is as Scott raised is is this a case of structural racism, or is this something else that that's causing this disparate impact? And uh, that you know, we we need to we need to take a look at that. We need to think about that. Uh, or is is it more of a class problem than it is a race problem? In that uh, people of a certain socioeconomic uh, strata are getting hammered by this, and that happens to be African Americans. Uh, so that I mean, an important questions to to think about and discuss. But yeah, it is unprecedented. I've never I've never seen anything like this where we're just going to say we're going to take two statewide offices and. Uh, yeah. We'll have elections sometime that we don't, have no idea when. <laughs> what do you do if you're the candidates in these races? We have no idea when. You know, I mean, PSC is not an office. You know, it's it's one of those down the ballot races. They're not loaded with cash. And not, they're not loaded with campaign cash. I think. How do you, you know, dispense? How do you spend that? I think most. I, mean, I think, I think a lot of Georgians know. may have it's, heard it's, of it's PSC very for wild the first time and, when Republicans. Touted yeah. the win in the PSC race <laughs> in the runoffs in uh, in January 2021. Well, yeah, we we lost the two Senate races, but but guys, look, we kept the PSC <laughs> race. That's what's yeah. important here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at Bubba yeah. McDonald, right? Yeah, uh, that was uh, among election conspiracy theorists. They point to Bubba saying, "There's no way Bubba could win and Trump lose." <laughs> Uh, or there's no way uh, Bubba could win and David Perdue lose, yeah. and and yet we Ap- persist. Apparently, the election stealers <laughs> own, uh, are, are very selective in what offices they steal. So, <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. They have the system um, in right. place to they only steal, steal all some. elections, but uh, they only so, choose to so, steal uh, some. I watched <laughs> I watched election returns on right. Tuesday. Evening. Otherwise, you'd just be crazy. Uh, I was I was very disappointed to see uh, Peter Meyer lose at the Michigan's third congressional district. Peter being one of the more uh, mostly libertarian leaning members of the House Republican Conference. But uh, and then, uh, of course, Arizona was the disaster uh, that everybody expected it to be. And uh, but interestingly, Kansas, uh, I think I think this may have surprised a lot of people considering Kansas um, typically is viewed as a conservative state. They do have a Democratic governor, but that's what happens when you nominate a crazy person for governor. Um, which is what happened in uh, in 2020, uh, but they had an amendment on the ballot to uh, it was it was very oddly worded. It was basically like, should we amend the constitution to ensure that there's not there's not a right to abortion? Uh, so if you wanted the mm-hmm. constitution amend, amended, you you chose yes. If you didn't want it amend, amended, you chose no. Uh, as of I mean, I'm looking at the results right now, but as of election election night, it was projected that the no's won by. Uh, by a sizable margin, it was fifty nine percent to forty one percent, and uh, obviously, you have certain population centers mm-hmm. in Kansas that that largely carry the state. That's you know Topeka, Kansas City, Wichita; uh, those areas are re- the real population centers uh, in Kansas, uh, and and really really pull the state. Uh, just like Atlanta, Metro Atlanta, mm-hmm. Atlanta and Metro Atlanta pull Georgia. Um, 
but this was uh, this is pretty this is pretty eye opening, I think, for a lot because I've heard a lot of things over the course of the past couple of days uh, since this result came out that there, there are some Republicans, particularly national Republicans, who are freaking out about this result in Kansas, in Kansas, mind you. Uh, so I'm curious to get you guys' thoughts on how this, you know, how this mm-hmm. may interplay into Georgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll go with you first, Buzz. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I was I was kind of shocked, um, but then yeah, when you when you read that ballot question, it was the one of, it was one of the most confusing ballot questions I think I've ever ever seen, and I think you know it took me several times to read it to think what the heck are they what the heck is this even doing, and so and then I I saw a Washington Post article that said that the Kansas Republicans hired some hotshot consulting group to craft the question. So they thought that they had crafted a question that was going to be a slam dunk when probably a majority of Kansans would consider themselves pro-life and, and certainly don't want, you know, I mean, as I understand it, the way Kansas, as it stands now, Kansas has one of the more liberal, one of the more permissive abortion laws in all of the United States, which means it's more permissive than France and on and on and on. Uh, so probably not uh, what most Kansans would want. But yet it, it passed, you know, as you mentioned, Jason, you know, 59 percent support, 59 percent in opposition to changing it. So I think it was a, a really poorly worded question. I think uh, it played right into the hands of the opponents who said if you know, who were very could very easily and truthfully say, look, if this is if this passes, then re- we know what Republicans are going to do. They're going to prevent any abortion from happening in the state of Kansas. Which, as we've talked about on the podcast, uh, you know that that might be more favorable to a, a hardcore pro-lifer like me, but that's not where the American people are, and that's probably not where most states are going to wind up. And so, you probably ended up with a lot of people who would consider themselves pro-life or or want numerous restrictions on abortion. Uh, and I also think I, I heard this this morning. I think this is a, an important point, and and it kind of gets to what you're talking about, Jason, about how does this impact Georgia and other states. What the reason the pro-life movement had success? They worked for 50 years to get to the moment where Roe v. Wade, where Roe v. Wade was overturned, was more or less relentless incrementalism. Uh, they they did not try to go for the whole ball of wax, okay. But and this what happened in Kansas was a departure from that. It was a let's go for the whole ball of wax, or at least or it opened up the door to be cast as that. And I think that's that's a mistake that that, that pro lifers need to stick to the strategy that has worked before, uh, has worked well for 50 years. Where all across the country they have made incremental gains, all sorts of restrictions on abortion have been passed with broad public support in in every st- on practically every state in this country, and that's the script that's worked, and that's the script that they need to stick to. And I think what happened in Kansas was a departure from that script. You know, I, I think Buzz's analysis there is spot on. Uh, you know, the I don't know that you could actually point to the ballot question as the reason to make up nine points. Uh, but I do think that the Republicans in Kansas that put this on the ballot that worded that way were too cute mm-hmm. by half. And they they cut off their own noses here. I think if they had worded it to the degree of should the the legislature in Kansas have the authority to restrict abortion uh, after the first trimester, I think they probably would have mm-hmm. had a better result um, I, for the pro-life movement. Um, if they had said, you know, should we, the legislature have the authority to regulate abortion, they would have had mm-hmm. a better result. The, the wording on it was definitely a contributing factor. I don't know that it was the factor. But I also think, you know, along Buzz's thought about incrementalism, you have to take these things uh, a step at a time. Uh, you, you, can't, you, you can't go from abortion being the law of the land under Roe v. Wade to complete and total ban the next day. You still have to do the work. And I think Kansas showed that you have to do the work. You also have to let things cool mm-hmm. off. You can't pick this up right away. We've learned that in the election law arena here in Georgia. You can't do an election bill every single year. People get fatigued. They, they, they're they tired of hearing about it. So uh, 
in relation to Georgia, you know, I think there are some some signs to learn from. You know, do they do they want to take the abortion law further? Well, is or is now the time to have that debate? Should there be a period of time where we have the current law, which is uh, is the heartbeat bill now? Should we allow that to to run for a while before taking it up again? I, so I think these I are things that every legislator in the, Georgia should be considering uh, as they head into the, the, the 2023 question. legislative and, session. Yeah, you know, the question the question itself is is a little hard to read. I, I will agree there. But they also provide other information. There's an explanatory statement. Uh, the explanatory statement uh, says the value them both amendment would affirm there is no Kansas constitutional right to abortion or to require the government funding of abortion and would reserve to the people of Kansas through their elected state legislators the right to pass laws to regulate abortion, including but not limited to in circumstances of pregnancy resulting from rape or incest or when necessary to save the life of the mother. And then it goes on to explain how a certain vote, what it what it would mean. And so it says a vote. My, 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 my. TLDR, <laughs> Jason. TLDR. People got in that voting booth and they didn't read that. I mean, you get, the question has to be one sentence and then that's it. And it has to be clear to the voter make, what make, it's going yeah, to do. And my, my you don't point have is they to, were if, if you are explaining, you're losing. Make right? your point. Whether, they, they, read it, whether they, they read it, they read it or not is their own damn fault. They were fully informed. So and it's not, yeah, it's, just not, it's, it's not just a question, but you can see, I mean, you can see rural Kansas yeah. voted uh, I for don't know. the we'll amendment. <laughs> it was, you know, Wichita um, and Kansas City suburbs and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they voted against it. I mean, I think that's a telltale sign that, yeah, it may have been confusing to some, you know, maybe it would have been closer if it was more clearly worded. I don't know. But um, I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now. Politicians, politicians have to. If you're a Republican or a conservative politician, you've well, got to tread carefully I, in this issue because poll after poll shows, and you can't dispute this. Poll after poll shows that most voters believe in the right to abortion, even if they now that also mean. And their polls also show that they believe that it should be limited. I think it should be limited. You know, the question is, what is the limitation? Even even and, and that's we've talked about this before ad nauseum on the yeah. podcast, especially over the last course of the last couple of weeks. Casey, yeah. which was also overturned when Roe was overturned, talked about the, it allowed states to place limitations on abortion. It established the viability test. So I, I, I don't know. I just think I think I think conservatives, Republicans mm-hmm. may have gone too far here and not just in Kansas. I'm talking about overall. And I think this is something that's going to come back. And bite them in the rear end come November. I mean, and yes, voter the vote the elector has a short hold on hold on hold on. The elector has a short term memory. Yes, well, and the next I mean, thing but, could well, pop up. T- Remember, Ukraine was the news of the day six months ago. Uh, but the next thing, and the next thing could pop up. It almost certainly will. But um, yeah, you know, Biden has some wind. You know, has some, you know has some wins, and he's slowly turning the tide. And, you know, this is the Republicans will still take the House. I firmly believe that. But I think I think the margins are going to be narrow and I don't think they're going to take the Senate. Anyway, go ahead. OK, so my all right. So Monday I had lunch with a friend who told me he, he we, we had a discussion. He's convinced Republicans are going to blow it. And, and that uh, they won't regain the House and won't regain the Senate. And I kind of well, papooed it. But that was Monday, right? So Tuesday, <laughs> you know, the, yeah, the cancer, the cancer result happens. The other things, you know, nominated some real knuckleheads in, in various other places who might lose the Senate seat in Arizona, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then, you know, I had honestly, I had not looked at the generic ballot quest, the generic ballot congressional generic ballot in a while you look at the rcp average suddenly the big leads that we saw from republicans are gone and uh, um several you know f- three of the last five polls show democrats with the lead so yeah this morning i got a little panicked i was like all right uh, maybe my friend is right maybe republicans are about to blow it and certainly jason to your point i mean that what you're saying about abortion is definitely what 
you know, I've seen she, uh, tweets this week from from Jen Jordan, from uh, Stacey Abrams, uh, 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 what's his name, Mike Lukovic, uh, Lukovic at the AJC. You know, they're trying to cast the narrative. All right, an, an army of handmaids are going to march to yeah. the polls. And there will not be a Republican left standing come November, and that's certainly what they hope. Uh, so, um, I, I don't know. I, I still, I still don't think. Yeah, th- there always is that danger that Republicans overplay their hands, and perhaps, as to Scott's point, you know, can't, maybe Kansas legislature should have left this alone for a little while and let things sort out before they take up this question. Because as it stands in Kansas right now, uh, they they can the legislature yeah. cannot impose any restriction on, on abortion in Kansas uh, other than what already exists in law. So, uh, yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I just don't think if, if Stacey Abrams and Jen Jordan or Jordan are going to, uh, and B win and others uh, in the democratic party are going to make abortion uh, a centerpiece of that. Campaign, no, I agree. I but still, before you, before you, I, that, I still think I that's a big to, mistake on their part. Up, if uh, they want to do what that. Says the real clear politics average 0.1. That's that is one tenth of one percent. That is the Republican advantage, according to the most recent polls that have come out. Um, Republicans hold leads in three of the last six polls, six polls, six polls. Uh, but those two of those are Rasmussen and Insider Advantage, which are simply put, not credible pollsters. Uh, see one of, and then the other one. See, I'm sorry, like Rasmussen is a joke, and Insider <laughs> Advantage. I come on, uh, but. Yes, in C- C- yeah. C- CBS News has Republican with a two point advantage. You, <laughs> We've you talked about entire Obama advantage on the podcast and, before. Uh, we Politico agree. all have Democrats with a, with a with a lead. Uh, granted, you know, close except for the YouGov poll, but still with a lead. And those those leads Republican had Republicans had several months ago or a couple months ago, even, shit, even a few weeks ago, had disappeared. Scott, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, you made the comment that Republicans have gone too far, and, and, and this is what I want to highlight in wrapping this up for me, is that the, the the Supreme Court pushed this back on the states. And we've said since the beginning that r- the overturn of Roe v. Wade does not end abortion in the United mm-hmm. States. And this is a clear <laughs> example and evidence that that statement from when Roe v. Wade got overturned is absolutely true. So Roe v. Wade being overturned is not the end of abortion in this country, and uh, it, it simply allows the states to regulate it in a way that is, is consistent with how the state views that as either a health issue or a right to life issue or however you frame it. It pushes it back to the states. We seeing this in, in Kansas, whether we like the result or not is an example of how our federalist system is supposed to work. And it and therefore it is reestablishing the the power balance where it should be in the states. And I, I disagree with the, the I would have voted differently than the, the majority of Kansans. But that being said, I have to respect that we live in a federalist system where states have the authority to regulate these things on their own um, as established by the overturn of Roe v. Wade. And that, no, you may, my friends, no. is a good Can I make thing. one more point before no, we move to the next subject, Jason? Can I, let, can I make Go one ahead, more boss. quick point? <laughs> well, fine. I'm going to make it anyway. Um, all right. <laughs> I, I think one concern that I have is that Mitch McConnell has said this, the Senate Republicans are not going to lay out an agenda. Uh, and they have not laid out an agenda of what you know what Republican leadership of the Senate might mean. Uh, I think that's a mistake. Uh, I think also it's kind yes, of it is. become you know Republicans have kind of said in all the consultant classes said don't talk about abortion. And I and while I agree you should not make abortion the centerpiece of your campaign, I think Republicans are going to have to talk about it. They're going to have to. T- especially if you are a candidate for governor, for uh, attorney general, for state house, right, where where now these decisions lie, you're going to have to talk about it. And Republicans better pretty quickly find their voice on this, on how to talk about this in a compassionate, in a a pro-life compassionate way uh, and not give in to 
the uh, extremists uh, you know, like Georgia Right to Life who wants to call a special session and immediately ban all abortions in the state of Georgia. You've got to have to figure out how to talk about that. And, I, and if anything, uh, you know, can't the Kansas result for the rip, the ripple effect for Republicans across the country are, are that's probably what it is. The, yeah. the, the ripple effect is that um, so Republicans are going to have to find week, a voice on this uh, and have to that talk about it. Music Midtown uh, was being canceled, and uh, I think initially it was speculated. I think it was later confirmed that the reason uh, Music Midtown was going to be canceled was because uh, the event takes place at Piedmont Park. Uh, because it is not a long-term uh, rental, uh, the they could do nothing to stop anyone from bringing a firearm uh, into into the event. Um, and because of Georgia's guns, quote unquote, guns anywhere law, uh, which we call constitutional carry, uh, artists had writers that stipulated no weapons were allowed. That's my understanding, Scott. You know, don't don't just shake your head. Okay, all right. Whatever. The guns everywhere um, law was my, a separate piece of legislation my, my, than constitutional my carry. Point, my point is that but, my point is yeah, that they were they could not stop individuals who were coming to, the, <laughs> to the, the festival from bringing in a firearm. That's what Music Midtown said. Music Midtown canceled. I did think the one comment from Killer Mike this week, the the Atlanta uh, rapper, uh, who who said who who basically said like this is this is being used as, as a facade as an excuse. He's like they're losing, they're losing money and things like that. Essentially, is what he said because he's like, you know, shaky knees. They did shaky knees. There was not a problem. They've done other festivals. This hasn't been a problem. Uh, so this doesn't. He basically said like this doesn't smell right. So, uh, but if you're a Fallout Boy fan, I'm sorry. If you're a My Chemical Romance fan, I'm sorry. Um, you know, you, if you're a Turnstile <laughs> fan, if you're a Turnstile <laughs> fan, there's a pretty decent chance they're playing at Furnace Fest this year over in Birmingham. So there's that. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm sorry. Like I've heard, I'm looking at the list of, of bands <laughs> or, or, or like artists playing and I've, I've heard of like one, two, three, four, five of them. <laughs> I'm not like I've in, in two chains of so six. I've heard of two chains. So, uh, anyway, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Scott. T- tell me. I will, does, I will that, say this. does that just indicate that you're getting old, Jason? Is that what that says, or or is it's it mostly the quality? Uh, is it the quality of the acts, acts old, or is it like, uh, you're you getting? You got to remember. You got to remember that, like, my musical taste does not extend <laughs> beyond like punk rock, hardcore, and metal. So, like, <laughs> so. <you know. laughs> I don't. Even, I don't even like. I, like, I mean, I don't mind. If I don't, there's I don't not mind a rage reading, scream like, somewhere in the song, the Jason's not giving you the thumbs up. up He's not rating it five stars. And for those of you who don't know Zao, like, just Google them. Z A O. Uh, the singer. The singer. If you've ever heard, don't do that. No, do it because they're really good. But like, if don't you've do ever heard that. The band Carcass. The singer listeners, like trust me, don't do Carcass, that. Uh, but he sounds like Satan. Don't so, Google. Anyway, go ahead, Scott. The funny thing is, they got their start as a Christian. He sounds like Satan. They got their start well, as a Christian. Man. Geez, really funny. Uh, devil went yeah, down to ahead. Georgia, I guess. Um... <laughs> well, okay then. Uh, never heard of most of those bands, so I am too old. Uh, I've never been to Music Midtown. I, I really wanted to go to Shaky Knees when they had Tears for Fears. <laughs> yeah, you can... You, yeah, yeah. So you are so old, I, I, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, I am super old, man. I am super old. So uh, my my uh, you know '80s pop oh, was like my jam. You know, I I, I waited. Give me some Depeche Mode and some Cure, so and I'm a happy sick. guy. I, wish I stayed asleep today. <laughs> but that's Sorry. all I have to say. You know. <laughs> 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 oh, come for the political discussion and hear hear the pie cover the cure. That's awesome. Uh, so uh, I have to, I have to, look, I don't know the inner workings of music yeah. in town. I have no idea. I can tell you that the guns everywhere bill has been the law of the land for six years, seven years. Yeah, but what, wasn't the complaint um, the compa- their complaint was about uh, the constitutional carry, right? The con because there's there's some guy who is challenging all these things and saying, you can't stop me from bringing a gun to your event. 
because well, of the I think the, the real catalyst there was the, I think the real catalyst there buzz was the Supreme Court ruling that municipalities can't overrule your right to carry mm -hmm. and and so that recent support Supreme Court case is really what's driving mm -hmm. the lawsuit from the activists in Georgia who says I, I should be allowed to carry now look the guns everywhere bill does have some restrictions on carrying you have to you know be licensed for one uh the the people who own the property have to give you permission you can't just go into an, uh, an event i think really between them losing money if killer mike was right and they're losing money they probably didn't have the law fees covered in their budget the legal fees covered in their budget to push back i don't think that under the law as i understood it as i voted for it as a legislator would prohibit a person who is renting a space from restricting gun access. Now, they would have to provide security. They would have to provide a uniform method for making sure everybody wasn't carrying as they went into the venue. But beyond that, I, I, I do believe that a private business has a right to dictate how their private businesses are done. You see on certain businesses before you walk in, no guns allowed. Mm -hmm. You see that in convention mm -hmm. centers. The, the Georgia Republican mm -hmm. Party had their their convention in Augusta at a convention center that said no weapons allowed beyond yeah. this point. Um, so they didn't and they didn't provide security, which they they should have if you're going to disarm people, I believe. So all that to say, I, I don't know if this is just smoke and mirrors or not. It, it doesn't smell right. I'm sort of like with Killer Mike. If Killer Mike probably knows way more about this than I do, uh, so his credibility would be up for debate, but I have no reason to doubt what he's saying. And there are other people who have questioned this as well because the, that law has been the law for so long and that they're just now getting around to saying, well, we're going to cancel it. Um, I, I would like to see what happens with other music festivals. Shaky Knees obviously is coming up. Buzz. Um, and yeah. we'll have other opportunities to see how they handle it. Well, this it. is certainly political fodder because uh, Stacey, Stacey Abrams has jumped all over this. And, and uh, uh, I guess, well, others, I suppose Abrams might not have, but others have because, um, but it immediately brings up, all right, well, Stacey cost us the all-star game and now Brian Kemp has killed Music Midtown, which is worse. Uh, so uh, not have a you good, ever been the Music Not Midtown? a winning issue for Abrams. <laughs> Okay, I, I went. I went when I was in high school. I never have. No, never have. I'm I'm old. I mean, you guys look. You guys are, you guys are old. I'm really old, right? So the the, the thought of being in a park with went, tens of thousands of people school, just probably no. I'm too old for that. Man. Uh, I don't really remember much about it because I think I mean I think I, I scroll nuts every point I saw them. I don't remember who else I saw. It's been so long ago. I barely remember concerts I saw two years ago. So not, well, three years ago, because two years ago, there were no concerts. Um, uh, all right. Well, mo mo moving moving right along. Um, so blue states are, are making a pitch for Georgia businesses to relocate to their states. Um, I, I, don't get, I don't get this play. Um, I don't get this play uh, because blue states – like New York and California. I mean, the individual income tax rate in California is like 15%. Like that was the, and that was the thing we talk like when we talk about Freddie Freeman leading for Los Angeles, he's actually take like his contract value is less on an annual basis than it would have been if he stayed in Atlanta. Uh, because. Right. Uh, because because yeah. he decides, his, yeah, his take home pay is considerably well, less. He decided <laughs> to, to bolt out west. Uh, New York, uh, I don't know what the tax rate is up in New York, but uh, I can't imagine it being less than Georgia. Uh, you know, you look at high, yeah, I, I'm, I imagine it's higher. You know, same uh, you New Jersey, higher, same twice. twice. Each, each of these yeah. states are generally heavy handed in terms of regulation. Uh, you know, California, New York, uh, New Jersey, a few others as well. Um, I, I don't I don't see this like I don't see this as being a smart move. I mean, you look at these states and it's like people are leaving your like actively leaving your states like because they're tired of of the, the restrictions, be it on personal freedom or, or you know, uh, cost of living, whatever the case may be. Like you're good luck. You're good luck. Good, 
you know, more power to you, but you good luck. You're going to need it. Uh, Buzz, what do you make of this? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, hey, I don't blame them for trying, but but you're right, Jason. It, they're they're making the assumption that that businesses move to Georgia solely for the political climate, when that's probably way down the list for most businesses. It's the business climate, and you're right, Jason. The uh, you know the 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 corporate tax rate, the corporate business environment, the ability to expand your facilities as you want, the uh, the ease at working with the state government and local governments. That's what they're interested in, and they're not going to pick up a move to California, New Jersey, and New York, where the government is, you know, telling you what what size of, of soft drink you can drink. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not going to. Yeah, you know. well, blo- yeah, blo- Bloomberg, Bloomberg. Uh, <laughs> I forgot Bloomberg. about the soda tax. Yeah. His steps to a, oh. <laughs> reduce salt in foods and and put taxes on sugary <laughs> drinks, including diet sodas. Uh, but Scott, Scott, let me get your let me get your two cents. <laughs> <laughs> my two cents is i think that brian kemp responded perfectly bluestein asked him about this for an article in the ajc and his his quote is have you checked the gas prices in those states lately i'm not too worried about people leaving georgia and going to new york or, or new jersey or california in fact i think people are leaving those states and coming here because of our policies and and our business climate our business climate that Buzz highlighted a moment ago is created by our political yeah. environment. So as people come here from those other states, uh, you know, as refugees from the blue states to Georgia, they are met with lower taxes, a more affordable cost of living, and a business environment that attracts employers on grand scales. Yeah. And if they want to have a productive life, they have a better shot at that here than there. And that's because of our political climate and the leadership of people like Brian Kemp, who put these types of policies in place so that the benefit goes directly to the worker and, and the yeah. employer in these situations. So I, I loved his response and I thought it was dead on because if you look at the gas prices in California versus Georgia today, they're paying what a buck, a buck 50 more a mm-hmm. gallon. That's, that's enough I was, money uh, in I was going budget. to, uh, I, uh, line item the to other day. make a huge impact and, for a lot of um, families. We practice at a place called Seven Drum City. It's right off North Capitol Avenue, um, little little north, about, about a mile and a half north of the Capitol. And uh, I passed this gas station, and gas in DC is notoriously high. I mean, especially like in cap in the in the Capitol Hill area, Georgetown, gas is like you know uh, when it peaked when it peaked a few months ago, it was. Uh, it was like five ninety nine for unleaded. It was ridiculous. Um, but th- this is DC. I mean, so gas is, gas prices are going to be more expensive in DC in DC than they are Holy even moly. in Northern Virginia. Uh, no- Northern Virginia, I think the most I paid was like five oh nine at one point. <clears throat> um, it's back. It was back when I uh, when I gassed up last in Northern Virginia. It was like mm. uh, like four twenty nine. You know. Um, so, but I say that to say this. Uh, but like I, I drove around the other day and gas prices in DC are falling, you know, I mean, it, they're falling everywhere, but they're still higher because, you know, given DC a, a more progressive city, you know, you, you wouldn't have to go far, you know, far further North to see gas prices in Baltimore and Philadelphia, those being higher and then get up to New York where I imagine, you know, a tank of gas or a gallon of gas is going to cost you as much as a ga- or a pack of cigarettes, which is probably like $10, 12 I'm being silly, but you, <laughs> You know, you know what I mean. I mean, gas prices in New York and New Jersey are going to be a lot more expensive because of the policies they have in place. Yes, you're going to pay. You're going to pay four fifty when the rest of the country when Georgia's paying. I mean, last I heard, Georgia had the lowest gas yeah. prices in the country. It was like three fifty a gallon. You know, um, but that's not that's not just the end of it. I and mean, we mentioned those things at the top when we were talking about the, in this mm-hmm. segment, talking about you know income tax rates, things like that. Those are things businesses look at. They look at the quality of life for their prospective employees. Um, that's why Georgia gets in yeah. bidding wars with Charlotte all the time. It's it's looking they're looking at what's yeah. you know they're looking at the quality of life for employees in the mm-hmm. area around this, the the place where the business would be. You know, and it's it, it is expensive to live in the Northeast or out west in California. So I mean, you look at the house. A fifteen hundred square foot home in California is going to run you about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, and it's not going to be that nice. 
So, yeah, fun fun times. Uh, Scott turned our attention yeah. to an interesting story story this week. The <laughs> yeah. uh, Danny Porter uh, district attorney yeah. was soft of cu- soft accused of framing a cop for murder. Um, and and I, Scott, I I, 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 will, I will admit here that I did not have an opportunity to read the story that you sent us, so I'm claiming a point of ignorance. So I will turn it over to you. Sure. So Sean Kipe, uh, Sean, S-E-A-N, Kipe, K-I-P-E, has done a series of podcasts related to Georgia. He's He came to Georgia originally as a production uh, location scout for one of the major streaming services. I want to say it was Netflix, but I, I don't remember exactly. But while he was here, he got tipped off on a story about the Dixie Mafia up in the Hall County, Barrow County area, and possibly one of the most prolific mass murderers in American history, a guy named Billy Sunday Burt. And he met his son and they tell the story of him through a true crime type of thing. And, you know, Billy Burt um, died of suicide in prison uh, in old age. But that story is, is, was really well done. It was actually, it's called in the red clay. And it was recommended to me by state representative, Micah Gravely. He, he told me I should listen to it. So I did. And I was, I was really taken aback by how, or well, not taken aback, but impressed with the storytelling of Sean Kipe. So I listened to a second one. It's called Fox Hunter, and it's about an unsolved murder down in Jeff Davis County from the 90s. Also really well done, uh, and there's a call to action there that I, I personally would like to get involved, involved with. But in his third one, it's called In the Land of Lies, and it's about Mike Chappell. Michael Chappell was a police officer in Gwinnett County in the 90s, and um, was accused and convicted of murder. He continues to this day to espouse that he was innocent. And in the very first podcast of In the Land of Lies by Sean Kipe, one of the people he's interviewing says that Danny Porter has a lot of questions to answer because he was involved in the framing of <laughs> Mike Chapel. And I thought, wow, this is a guy I know, right? Buzz and I both know who Danny Porter is. I fought with Danny Porter while I was a member of the legislature because I was trying to reform civil asset forfeiture, and he was the head of the Prosecuting Attorneys Council. And we went head-to-head on that uh, uh, a lot. But to have him named in this podcast, it instantly was like, whoa, the Danny Porter I know couldn't do that. But how well do I really know him? So I thought it was fascinating that here we have a public figure who is being publicly called out this way. And it, it didn't quite accuse him of it, but like tiptoed right to the is, line. Is order, of Danny Porter's of it. aware of, and aware of this. that was a, a fascinating development. So I, I mean, uh, do you know Scott? That's a good question. I mean, Dan, I'm so, sorry. I mean, Danny's it? Danny's retired yeah. now. He chose not to run for re-election. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. He was he was defeated. I'm sorry. He was defeated by a Democrat. He chose not to switch parties. Yeah. It was an attempt. Uh, Democrats were trying to woo him over to get him to switch parties, which he did not. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of – the pictures I see of him on these days on Facebook, he, he looks like he's enjoying life at the beach. So he may say, you know, knowing Danny, he, he probably says, screw you, you're wrong, and I'm, I'm, going, I'm going back to the beach. Um, but, look, yeah, I mean, look, I know, I've known Danny for a long time. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I was friends with him, but – I supported him for re-election numerous times. He supported me for re-election. I, my thoughts about him are that he was a tough as nails prosecutor, and if he set his eyes, uh, if he, if he was convinced that he had the evidence, he was going to come after you hard. And he did that numerous times. He did that to Republicans and Democrats. Uh, he put some people, uh, he put some uh, corrupt uh, Republican officials. Out of drove them out of office as he pursued them of what he thought was corruption. So I've always appreciated that about him. But I think you know I, I haven't listened to the podcast. I read the article that you sent, uh, Scott, and um, I, I don't know. I, I think we're, we're kind of Scott and I were talking beforehand, and I, I I wanted to make this point. There there are a lot of these kinds of podcasts out there that are looking back and questioning various convictions for various things. Uh, and sometimes, you know, I think what's what helps fuel this. First of all, they're interesting. These guys are good storytellers, uh, and they tell a very interesting story. They're very fascinating cases when the, most of these when they take them up. And there's a real appetite out there to hear these kinds of things. But there's also 
um, some of these have actually helped crack cases and helped overturn cases and gotten people out of jail. So that that certainly happens. But I think I think we we're kind of in an era, in my opinion, where we're questioning everything, and it, you know the pendulum to me is is swung too far. And I'm thinking of you know there was a guy Payne Lindsay he did a couple podcast series, one called Atlanta Monster, where he was looking at all these aspects of the Wayne Williams case. Uh, he's throwing out lots of questions, very well done, and I'm not criticizing him or his his ability to tell these stories. Uh, but the more I listened to it, the more convinced I became Wayne Williams, he may not have killed everybody, but he killed some people. Yeah. <laughs> he deserves to have his, has to sit in jail. <laughs> um, he also had a great one about uh, the Tara Grimstead case down in, in Osceola, a very tragic case of a young teacher who was, who was murdered. And I don't think they ever really found her body, but anyway, I, I guess to me, this, uh, you know, if people want to look at this and, and this guy, uh, Chapel, is sitting in jail and, and he has every right uh, to pursue and, and maintain his in- innocence and pursue every legal option that exists be- to him. Uh, but I'm skeptical. I, I, you know, <laughs> I'm skeptical that this is a case that needs to be overturned. And as, as Scott said, I'd be blown away if. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it, you, the, the point Porter you raised just now, Buzz, about um, about where we we tend to overanalyze or tend to take everything and look at it as, look at it as a conspiracy theory could not be more true. Uh, that is the unfortunate, the fortunate, sad state of of our country. We find yeah. the conspiracy in in everything. It seems so. Um, but yeah, m- moving moving to uh, our neighbor to the south, yeah. God's waiting room, Florida. Um, Rod Rod. <laughs> Ron, <laughs> Ron DeSantis has, has has Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has suspended the uh, the county state the, the county attorney or the state attorney in Hillsborough County Andrew Warren uh, for what uh, DeSantis said is a failure to uh, enforce state laws, um, according to the story from the Tampa Bay Times, uh, including a pledge not to prosecute people for receiving an abortion or their doctors performing them. Um, so he said at news conference flanked by police from around Tampa Bay, DeSantis said Warren had put himself publicly above the law by signing letters saying he would not enforce laws prohibiting gender affirming care for minors or laws limiting abortion. Um, you know, we, we've talked about this uh, in, in Georgia uh, when it comes to Jen Jordan and her pledge not to, uh, not to enforce uh, Georgia law. Uh, you know, DeSantis seems to be in, in, you know, he seems to be doing what he uses right here. I disagree with the law, but the county attorney is, that had a responsibility to enforce the law. Um, I, but like I said, I disagree with the law. I disagree with Georgia's law, but you have a responsibility as an elected official to enforce those laws. If you don't like the law, work to get a change. Um, but yeah, uh, Scott, we'll go with you first. Yeah, Scott is muted because Joey was barking you, in the background. I think you're muted, Scott. <laughs> Joey was going nuts. We need so, a we all, uh, I think somebody we need knocked a weekly on the door. appearance by Joey, uh, so I'm cool with that. So, so yeah, well, that was the appearance. <laughs> you heard him. Uh, for those of you who watched the podcast, you did not see him, but you definitely heard him. So anyway, uh, I think this reestablishes the, the, the action taken by the governor reestablishes this concept of separation of powers, right? First and foremost, you got to recognize that Florida constitutionally gives the, the authority to do this to the governor. Uh, I don't know that we have this authority in Georgia. So again, federalism, different states do things different ways, but I think it reestablishes the separation of powers within the three branches of government and with the district attorneys being a, a function of the executive branch and enforcing the law, mm-hmm. that's their job, right? They don't get to pick and choose which laws on a blanket basis. They're allowed to use their discretion when, uh, with a various set of circumstances, but they cannot make blanket statements saying, I am never going to enforce this law under any circumstances. That's a big no-no. And there's a significant difference, and I think it's important to highlight that you have discretion on certain cases 
when you take the totality the totality of the the circumstances for that case and whether or not to prosecute that they're extenuating circumstances if there's you know other things to consider maybe you don't prosecute that case but to make a blanket statement saying under no circumstances will i prosecute one of these cases you are now legislating and that's not your job somebody else was elected to do that job and they did that job jen jordan when she was a member of the legislature that was her job she lost the debate she lost the vote she is not allowed to make blanket statements that she cannot or she will not enforce a law that was duly passed by the legislature in Georgia. You don't have that authority. You don't have that right. So I think it's a great thing. I think it sets a great example for the rest of the country um, for, you know, these DAs who are activists and decide they want to play the role of legislature. Mm -hmm. That's not your role. You know, I don't we, think it's a, have a, a branch of government I mean, I think specifically designed to pass laws and you're not legal. Part of it. Um, and what, you know, and I think the DA was in the, or the state, whatever it's called, state attorney. I think the state attorney was in the wrong here, but I don't think it's a great thing. I mean, DeSantis has positioned himself as on the front line of fighting the culture wars. He's exhibited authoritarian tendencies already. Uh, he's obviously running for president in 2024. Um, he is, from my perspective, more dangerous than Trump because he knows how to play the game. Um, Yeah, and it, with the danger well, I mean, of the, asking the, a question, I don't the know the answer to. to uh, what do you mean by authoritarian and stripping tendencies Disney already? of its of its tax of its special tax status? Not doing it mm -hmm. for other mm -hmm. places and uh, other special tax districts in Florida. That that irked me. That that was obviously going back again. He you know, he calls it woke culture. And look, you know, I, I get the pushback against some aspects of woke woke culture, especially when it comes to things like pronouns and stuff like that, or even. When we talk about gender affirming treatments for minors, you know, I, I don't I I would agree yeah. with the conservative stance on some of those things to some to a certain extent. Um, but DeSantis knows it's popular with the conservative base. He knows it's po he's he's positioning himself amongst this populist new right. And he is doing all he can to be. This is the only way he knows he can beat Trump in a primary is to make himself the the frontline fighter in the culture wars. And that's, you know, and the only way you do that is by out authoritarian and authoritarian. Mm -hmm. That's just my two cents. <laughs> well, I, I agree that the retribution aspect of yeah. the Disney thing was bad. I think there is a legitimate question to ask whether or not Disney should have a special tax allocation yeah, I, district like they I do. Don't, I, yeah, but I don't to disagree bring it up in, in those circumstances was a poorly played political move. I mean, it's political. I agree with it's, that. It's political uh, I don't know that it rises to the level of authoritarianism, about, like, there, but it was a bad thing. Should there be a debate over a special a tax bad districts way or tax statuses? Absolutely, it's bad tax policy. I, you know, it's it's yeah. I don't I don't necessarily disagree with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Disney. Absolutely, Disney not. is clearly not passing that along to their Absolutely guests in their park. Not. Those tax breaks when you have to buy a soda for five or six bucks. You know, as, as it, someone it must cost a family money. of four a thousand dollars for the, the day. The prices of going to Disney. Yeah. In I mean, like the they, next they, year. they are definitely. Yeah, keeping it's a little money. on the ridiculous side. Buzz, go ahead. <laughs> No, I, I, I mean, look, I, uh, there's a lot here. I, th I think uh, it seems to me that uh, DeSantis was acting under his constitutional authority to do so. Uh, but you're right. I, I, I'm kind of more with you, Jason, that I think um, he's, he's put himself, he's going to fight these fights. He's not, um, he's not Trump. He's smarter than Trump. Uh, he doesn't pick every battle. Trump Trump fought every battle. DeSantis picks his battles, and he fights them well. Uh, and that's going to appeal to a uh, to a big chunk of the Republican base, which is why you're seeing his name bandied about. Which is why even some polls of head to head between him and Trump suddenly it's it's a fight. It's a dog fight uh, between those two guys. Uh, and and yes, some of the things he's done give me pause. Uh, whether in a Republican primary, whether I would support him or not, I'm. Uh, I'm, 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 that's not my brand of, of politics, but, 
there are other things I love about DeSantis. He has absolutely uh, been a champion of school choice, and he has expanded that in Florida, and I love that. And there's uh, there's other things about his agenda that I like, so we'll see. Uh, but I think, you know, the, the back to the basic point about this, um, you, I agree with both of you guys. You cannot have prosecutors – who for who don't enforce the law for political you know, and don't enforce laws that they don't like politically? Uh, you just can't have that. And you, in a free society, you can't have that. It undermines the rule of law uh, in a whole host of reasons. We see it in other things, uh, and there's been there's been some backlash to it, like the the recall of the uh, of the of the dis- district attorney in San Francisco not too long ago. Who, uh, who, you know, for political reasons said, I'm not going to enforce a whole host of laws because of disparate impact on African Americans and so forth. And, you know, and the voters of San Francisco said that we didn't sign up for that and they, and they booted him. Uh, so it's the same thing. You can't have, uh, prosecutors who, who do this. And so, uh, you know, setting aside all the other stuff, you know, I, I, I think DeSantis, uh, you know, might, maybe maybe he was making an example of this guy to send the message to all other prosecutors that you better enforce the law, whether you like it or not. Uh, but yeah, that's you, we just can't have that in a free society where yeah. prosecutors uh, pick and, and choose then, what laws they enforce. And and tying it to Georgia, I I, I have I have, that to me that's just, if if Jen Jordan continue, continues in that saying I will only enforce laws that I like. That's disqualifying to me. I don't. I don't see how you anybody who supports the rule of law can can yeah. vote for her. For uh, and one thing general. I forgot to mention before I started talking about Florida was July in Georgia. July's revenue numbers were up two and a half percent, which is uh, just shows a continuation of strong economic numbers for Georgia. It's another economic indicator, um, building on another national indicator, the number of jobs created in, in mm-hmm. the month of July, which was uh, positive news. But two and a half percent increase in revenue. Uh, month over month, that's uh, that's good news. Well, I think it's good news because the 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 gas tax break has also been extended through September, and with that creates a big budget hole for the state. I was actually talking to a state legislator in Denver from Georgia uh, at the conference I was just at. And they were bemoaning to me that there's a giant hole in the budget now because <laughs> of the gas tax being uh, suspended. Well, they yeah. have the money yeah. here <laughs> to fill that hole without raising taxes. So, I, and I pointed that out. I was like, well, you have a huge surplus. Just <laughs> use that money to fill the hole. And if there's anything left over, please, you know, I'm right here. You can give it back. So I, I you know, I, we, I have hammered this point home for the last several months as we are deep into the gubernatorial race for Kemp's reelect. The man is pushing all the right buttons and he's pulling all the right levers on the economy in this state to keep us growing. Well, I in mean, spite of the national, the, the, the term recession. recession. Uh, so I think it's great. I, mean, look, we, I think we, we discussed this last week, two and a half. It's, it's two consecutive quarters of contraction in the economy, but that jobs number today raised some eyebrows guys. Mm-hmm. Um, it it was it, uh, <clears throat> yeah yeah no I doubt. didn't see it. Good. Tell me what the job number yeah was. the projection was like job, 540, 50, something, think, like that. something like that. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but the uh, yeah, I mean it was yeah. it was impressive and it kind of blew. Oh, so it was five hundred twenty eight thousand jobs added. That's what the number mm-hmm. was. I finally got it pulled up here on the hill. Uh, the hill.com for those of you who have never heard of it. Uh, they, yeah. And let's see the jobless rate fell to 3.5% uh, down, you know, one tenth of a percent. I don't see the estimate in here, but I think I heard on CNN this morning that it was 250. So, you know, that's, 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 that's pretty good. And that just, you know, like I said, that just kind of adds to the string of good news uh, for, for the Biden administration. But, you know, I, <clears throat> Yeah. So, all right. So, uh, to to throw a little cold water on that, Jason, here's um, the the uh, according to the household survey, uh, full time jobs hmm. are down seventy one seventy one thousand, part time jobs up three hundred eighty four thousand, 
and people oh, okay. with multiple jobs increased by 92,000. So I, I think, yes, I mean, obviously, yeah. even part, you know, creation of part-time jobs is, is better than no jobs. Uh, but I, I don't, I, I mean, I think, I don't know, uh, uh, economists need, you know, need to answer these questions, but I'm just, I'm just, I, I, I minored <laughs> in, in, in economics and that was a long time ago, but this might not be, I mean, this might not be a, yeah. you know, hopefully this is a mild recession, right? Hopefully, uh, that we, that, that, that we can, that the pain will be short lived lived for people, and that and that the job market, a strong job market, will will help us uh, help mitigate the the damage here, and we can get back on track. But um, so it may not be, yeah. uh, you know, we may not have massive yeah. massive unemployment uh, coming out of this recession. Hopefully, uh, and then the you know the, the the shocks that we've seen to the gas market, maybe they're if the energy market, maybe they're easing. I, I do worry about food uh, because for a whole host of reasons. Uh, you know, Ukraine and Russia being at war, they are major, major producers of grain. Uh, that has put a hurt on the shipments coming out of that. There's been a massive drought in Africa, which is another place where a lot of grain is produced. That could send some some shock waves through the food market. Uh, so I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's, there's a lot of factors going on that uh, many of them not good. And then the fact that there's so many of these jobs were part-time yeah. jobs. Um, I hadn't I seen the know. details of the report, but thanks for pointing that out. One Not thing good. I did note in my newsletter <clears throat> on Monday, uh, I haven't run a newsletter called Point of Order uh, for my job. And I mentioned that, you know, you look back at the recession in 2001, and that recession, I think, started in March of 2001, and it officially ended in November of 2001. Obviously, there were some things that happened in, be- in between here, like 9-11. And then, uh, but jobs are yeah. a lagging economic indicator. Um, you know, we didn't start seeing the unemployment rate go go up until I want to say like June of 2001, and and ultimately it didn't reach its pre uh, recession level until sometime in 2005. Uh, so, you know, it's a it's a lagging indicator. You know, and I think inflation is probably skewing the jobs report a little bit. We're we're kind of in a little bit of uncharted territory here, uh, but it's pretty interesting. But speaking, since we're talking about the economy, uh, mm-hmm. and I mentioned the the, the word inflation, uh, there is a little bit of an update coming out of Washington uh, today. If you guys want to hear about it, um, yeah. So, you know, <laughs> Democrats are trying to do something. Give it to uh, me, hey Joey. You. For those of you who are who are listening, not watching, Joey just walked in Scott's in Scott's office, and we have finally gotten our. Oh, it's a, I don't. I don't of, have. Yeah. A, a Tyler pet came to, in too. to show everyone, so I'm I'm, I'm the odd man out. Um, I can show you a, I can show you a picture of my old dog, uh, but uh, that the <laughs> that my ex wife got to keep. Um, yeah. um, so don't make me start singing Crazy Train, Scott. We're um, off the rails. <laughs> so. Uh, I do have a guitar over here. I can pull it out and start playing it. Um, so, uh, no, so uh, the, you guys probably remember the Build Back Better Act passed the House last year. Uh, it's been stalled in the Senate ever since because Manchin and Cinema couldn't get, uh, couldn't, didn't agree or didn't like uh, uh, portions of the bill, notably Manchin, who was concerned about inflation and uh, about continuing to overheat the economy. Manchin got on board very suddenly, too, last week. Uh, with, or was it last week or week before last? Um, week before last, with uh, with uh, he and Schumer struck a deal. Uh, basically, it, it comes in two specific, well, three specific parts. There's tax increases. Um, there are, and I'll get to the specifics in a second. Tax increases, the ability for Medicare to negotiate with prescription drug companies, um, and then uh, a bunch of environmental stuff. And then somewhere in all that mansion's getting a little bit of a kickback. Remember, guys, remember the corn husker kickback that Ben Nelson got during the ACA debate back in 2010? Uh, no? Okay. A no, pipeline. Uh, no. Is, what is he going to get? Is he going to get a like a, a brand new coal mine, um, you know, a so, spit shine uh, and ready for use? So Manchin agreed huh? to this. That meant that 49 <laughs> okay. Democrats were on board. Cinema, 
I had a little bit of a concern with one of the specific tax provisions, uh, the tax provisions being the corporate minimum tax, which is a 15 percent corporate minimum tax, uh, a tax or the, the elimination of what they call the carried interest loophole, which I understand is not actually a loophole. It's essentially how the how carried interest is supposed to function in our in, in the tax code. Uh, Cinema Express paused at those things. So they've kind of addressed her concerns with the corporate minimum tax and they've taken out the carried interest uh, uh, proposal. And um, instead, they're substituting a 1% excise tax on uh, stock buybacks um, by corporations. So uh, she has agreed. They, uh, they are out today, but they are coming back tomorrow. They'll start with a nominee and then eventually have a, have a vote, a cloture vote um, on the bill. And that will kick off Votorama. Are you guys familiar with Votorama? Okay, <laughs> Votorama is the yes. most fun part of I, I've heard. reconciliation because it is a period of time where amendment after amendment after amendment can be offered. These are all going to be political in nature. These are be gotcha amendments, largely speaking, to put Democrats in tough positions. Uh, some Democrats will also offer amendments. Bernie Sanders apparently is going to offer some uh, some provision or some amendments to strengthen the environmental side of the equation as well as potentially some tax stuff, uh, but. Um, uh, in the last, the last time they did Votorama, they voted on 43 amendments, I believe. And it took them, they started on it around about 11 AM and didn't finish until three in the morning, uh, the next day. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun to watch. The expectation is that it'll wrap up with a final vote sometime on Monday. The house, uh, actually right about the time we started, the house issued a notice uh, members are advised that pending Senate action on the Inflation Reduction Act, that by the name is, uh, that by the way, is the name of the bill. Uh, the House is expected to meet on Friday, August 12th to consider the legislation. So they'll have a vote series at nine o'clock. And uh, yeah, then they'll be done and they'll go back into August recess. So uh, it seems like this thing is probably going to pass. Um, and there's, uh, unless Republicans can peel off some Democrats, uh, on some of the amendments to make it less appealing, uh, it's going to be a tough time. So, or, or it's going to be a, it's going to be interesting to watch. I love watching the Senate; it's so much fun. So, I, I am a nerd. By the way, Scott, I uh, I don't know I don't know if I told and you. And that's I why to, you are uh, a nerd. <laughs> I took one of my old interns on a tour of the Capitol recently, and um, we we went actually went through Loudermilk's office. And did I tell you about this? The, yeah, I didn't know if I told if I said it on the podcast or not. You did, um, but you can tell the so listeners now that in, you're telling I went everybody. In Statuary Hall, and in Statuary Hall, uh, the statue of Rosa Parks is facing, and she's looking directly at Jefferson Davis inside Statuary Hall. Which, yeah, which is which is really cool, and they've actually put in a new statue. Recently. <laughs> they uh, put in the statue of Amelia Earhart, like just recently. Yeah, so. Uh, Oh, cool. Uh, I, it, statue placement is always interesting to me. I, yeah. I, I particularly enjoy visiting the Jefferson Memorial yep. because his eyes are straight at the West Wing. You know, he's he's looking directly at the White House, which, I, I, you know, yeah, I'm I it would be yeah. the. Yeah, the uh, moment was not lost on me. That, that <laughs> memorial is I got by it. far my favorite memorial <laughs> in D.C., the Jefferson Memorial. It's just a, it's a have you ever been to the museum? Have you ever been to the museum underground? <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. Yeah. All right. A lot of people don't yes. catch that. Yes. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. All of the stuff you can do in D.C. But don't reach out is to me. Great. You, you just yes, take your family I there will, and I will take you learn the, about our history. It's I will amazing. take you to the things I want you to see, not the things you want <laughs> to see. So there's. Yeah. So anyway, that's all. That's all the time. That is and all the time nobody wants to see week. that. <laughs> uh, I don't have the list pulled up, Scott. So uh, you are going to have to stall for, time for a second while I pull up the list of Patreon. <laughs> hey, we can we can talk briefly about free the, beer at Jason's house. The, the big, huge five games uh, series. Uh, Brave work. No, talk about Austin Riley and his yeah. his gigantic contract. Yes. How about that? You know, Austin Riley. Yeah, two hundred and twelve mm-hmm. million over yeah. ten years. Is that was yeah. that the number? Uh, Alex Anthopoulos continues to impress. You know, I, I think he did a, a fairly decent job of pawning off Will Smith. Um, 
to the Astros for another. <laughs> Who gave up a home run in his like first at bat with so, the, his first battery face for the Astros? <laughs> he's he great did, in the po- he? guys. He's great in the. Post-season. They got Will Smith. He's great in the postseason. <laughs> wow. You know you're you're gonna love him. You're gonna, yes, you're gonna love him in the postseason. Uh, by the way, he if they ever year. treat uh, well, Magic, I will riot. Yes. You know, you once uh, derisively described him as my god uh, yeah, on I, this podcast. I, 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 don't, that, right? I don't remember. You remember? I, I don't. You remember? I don't when remember. And and uh, uh, <laughs> John, wait, 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 remember hold, him. Hold, 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 remember when I, John just showed when, up in the chat when, and says I was late? Can you guys uh, start it was, over? It was, no, we are literally about to. We, we are literally about to finish. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> yeah. That's why this is recorded, John. We, we are... So you can you can listen to it anytime you want. <laughs> yeah, and, and John is taking John, advantage you, you of the ten dollar tier on Patreon, yes. by the way. Just so on, that on he can so uh, you too Yes, thank you John for being a Patreon. So I'll read our Patreons. <laughs> Uh, thank, thank you, you for Ryan being a Grace, Patreon, Sir John. Burnett, John Vestal, Brant Frost, Reed Powell, Benjamin Hurst, and Sam Thomas. Uh, you, these guys are Patreons. You, too, can subscribe to become a Patreon uh, at patreon.com slash peachpundit. Uh, you can also find our content at peachpundit.com. You can check the podcast out on Apple Podcasts and Spotify Podcasts. And I believe that's uh, – we obviously, we post the video on YouTube, but you can find that on peachpunnet.com. Uh, that's all the time we have for this week. Uh, and, yeah, uh, good good times. Uh, and John is yep. still insulted. He just insulted me and said, you're no Willow Bay who said my name on TV, but I'll take it. <laughs> all right. So I don't know how to take – I don't know how to – I don't know how to take that, John. But uh, have a great have a great weekend. Uh, peace out. Take care. A town down. <laughs>